So developing an eye for what I refer to as a subtle hidden eddy. There's one right there. I don't think that one's big enough, but it, it can be your key to unlocking not necessarily big concentrations of fish, but isolated little pockets of one or two or three big fish out here in the river in winter. Uh, we got one coming up here in front that I think looks a little bit more promising than what I just passed. Um, I'm going to hit it from a couple different angles. We're going to zoom in on it uh, from a distance and then I'm going to go in and, and fish it and see, you know, see if anyone is home. So we got one ledge coming across here. It's not real dominant. It's not exposed out of the water, but... Um, there's some depth on the back side of it and a little pocket of foam, there will be fish. All right, I actually stopped editing this video because I realized a lot of what I'm about to explain, you're just not gonna see it unless I stop and do what I like to call the illustration intermission. Here goes. All right, there's really just not a lot to illustrate here, but it's important that I do illustrate. And what you have is somewhere out in the middle of the river, which there's a whole lot of really swift current just blowing through here uh, in two spots. And they're, they're two fairly isolated little, little areas. I can see, I can generally see, and, and it's, it's, uh, you're gonna see it when we get back to the, the video, but there's a long linear line I'm, I'm checking out right there. And overall, you can see that line in a surface disturbance going across the river. No rocks are exposed. Um, the two dominant spots where, you know, you have a pretty strong ledge that comes close to the surface there and there, but all through this area, I'm just, I'm putting all these little spots designating that there's foam. There's foam that is not moving downstream. And really when I assess this, I, you know, I stay back. I position the kayak back here and I cast up into it and I work the tail out of that so call it a you know triangle i'm i'm really targeting this area first and most people screw it up they put their kayak right there and only cast there or there there wasn't on this particular eddy or maybe i just didn't catch them but that part is so important but the three fish that i caught two of them that were over 19 19 inches in this 180 were there and there. Sorry for the spoiler alert, uh, or lack thereof. Um, and I got one other one over here that was, I think, 18-ish. Um, but you start, you know, you position at the back, use the motor to hold position and cast up into bottom, and then you work the middle, and I eventually caught those, those two nice ones there. But the first thing you do is you move up onto it and watch, and you look, and you look for that foam. You hang back and you cast into it, you hold position. And it's a subtle thing, and I wanted you to see a top-down version of what, what's going on here as I edit the footage. That's what we're looking at. I actually, I'm, I'm assessing this one, and looks 
it still looks pretty turbulent. I think I'd have to get in close to uh, to see if it has any little still patches of foam. This one over here, I can see it from here. It has still patches of foam. Uh, that's the one I want to hit to first. I may come back to this one, but that one looks looks good. I don't know where these fish go in high water, but right now I could see there being a couple fish in here. Um, uh, three and a half, about three and a half feet in the area where there's a lot of current. Let's give it a shot. Again, I want to work the back side of the foam first, whatever you, you know, you come to first, then the middle, then the top. You take it in increments, downstream, middle, upstream. Because I don't want to run right over some fish that are right at the, the tail out of this, this patch. I want to I want to put a jig on them first. I want to give them a chance to eat before I scare them out of that area. The trick though, the hard part, is maintaining position back here while I'm still in the current and I got my left hand feathering the uh, the throttle I'm looking down at the rocks and uh, I can tell that you know I'm actually advancing upstream all right that's a good fish up at the top of that eddy yeah even jumped a little bit Oh, big head. Very large fish. I'm going to loosen the drag. Pretty sure that's big for the day. Sometimes these mid-river eddies can really, really be good for one or two big fish. And uh, this one for sure is big. I don't think we're going to see a lot of fish out of a netty that size, but that one was topside right plunked in the middle of it. He jammed that jig pretty good. Let's see how long he is. I'm gonna wet our board, keep that protective slime layer on him, and uh, yeah, nice. Got a 19 incher right there. Let's go ahead and release him, go back up and take a look at that that really isolated mid-river spot. Sometimes the the ones that aren't so obvious produce the better fish. All right, sometimes the biggest fish are all by themselves in those isolated mid-river eddies and uh this 19 incher certainly was. We'll go back up and take a look at that, but uh, and and just sort of assess what you know what was good about that spot. That's the key to pattern development: is go to the locations where you've caught good fish, make observations. We're gonna do that here in a second, but for now, we'll get this guy back in the water. All right, we are zooming back up there. Like that, you know, I lose ground by handling that fish and I get sucked down and I get to use that thing back there to zoom back up. As we approach though, I'm gonna let off that throttle and not throw a big wake on this fish. Um, it's nice about the, the Torquedo throttle is that it's, it really has that infinitely variable adjustment and uh, you can see your watt draw speed, remaining range and uh, you know the remaining battery. But there is no settings where it goes click, 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 click um, for you know for settings one through ten. It's infinitely variable. So to be able to you know to ease in on a spot like this and not throw awake and, and just to hold in a very specific speed of current behind it and cast up into it is uh is super nice so before we get up in there i'm gonna take another cast or two 
see if he doesn't have a friend in there. And then we're gonna go crashing into there and make some observations. And, you know, then look for similar type spots. But for now, the observations that I see is that it's, it's a ledge that goes all the way, you know, I can see parts of it all the way on that bank. It's pretty dominant here in front of me, but right where that fish was, foam that was sitting still pressed right up against that rocky disturbance that that wall that ledge immediately downstream from it totally still uh, foam just sitting there but we'll get up there make observations about depth bottom substrate or anything else that you know becomes apparent when we're sitting right on top of it looking at it so some of the observations that you can make about the spot that you've just caught a big fish you could do from a distance with your eyes but some of them you can do with the jig you know when you cast a lure into a spot you're feeling the bottom you know whether it's you know if you have a good sensitive rod like this st croix legend extreme uh, you can feel whether that bottom is that bottom substrate is sand, or gravel, or chunk rock, or leaf, or muck, or bedrock. Yeah, you don't have to go all the way up to it uh, to be able to tell what the bottom content is really like. So I'll put that up there. I'm also feeling the current. You know, I can feel that that fairly light eighth ounce jig is able to hold position it's not being tumbled down um, like it would be if I come back a little further you see this log drifting through it shows that there's there's current here that's a you know visual assessment but there's a tactile assessment of just knowing that hey I put a jig up there and it's it's staying where I left it the, the current is not sweeping through there so you know any any assessment that you can make from a distance is good that way you don't have to crash the spot I'm a little bit off of where I got that fish to bite he was in a very specific spot right in the center I can I can read where that foam is and uh, I'm almost close enough to, to drop it on it Bingo, I'm on it. There's at least one other good fish in there. Oh, it's a good one. Uh, he's mid river. Oh, look at that jump. You may be bigger than the last one. you run out your energy these hooks hold you pretty good although it's on the outside better get a net under him soon what a toad what a big 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 fish oh hello big fish big fish in the net yay <laughs> oh yeah glad that I hung back and didn't jump up in there and do the the assessment of the eddy right away again big fish spots aren't usually places that are that are obvious or that are you know that hold a lot of fish but that spot that mid-river ledge eddy held Let's see, a 19 and 19 and a quarter. So two 19 plus inch fish really in the same spot. And, uh, you know, I'll try it again. I, I'm 
sort of doubtful that there's another one that's that's quite this this uh, quality of fish, but who knows? Yeah. But yeah, when we look when we look at I'm gonna let you breathe, fishy. When we look at that, we're gonna take a micro view, really making observations about what's right there. Um, depth, bottom substrate, current, any cover, maybe there's a log or some remaining little bits of, I don't know. I'm not gonna say what's in there. Then we're gonna take a macro view. We're gonna look at it in terms of what is what else is around it? What is it connected to? What is, you know, what makes that such a special spot that it had two 19 plus inch fish? I don't know. We're gonna make our observations and uh, good spot. And uh, you use those observations to go go find similar spots. All right, gonna do a quick release shot of this guy for the uh, the shorts on my YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, there she goes. The the shorts are something that uh, it's kind of like TikTok, but it's it's YouTube. Um, it is 60 second or less videos, and it's a way that I'm able to reach a lot more people um, that that maybe wouldn't find the channel and and be able to learn from what I'm teaching out here on the river. So people have you know, especially on social media, have a short attention span. You got to give them what they want, and uh, that sort of teaser to get people to come in and watch the full-length video is uh, is certainly working to grow my channel. All right, I'm all the way up at the top. You can see. Let's start making the observations. Right here, this foam is just sitting. This is where the second one came out of. We have uh, something blocking the current there, and. You know, what is our depth? I can already see that our, our um, you know, with the paddle, it's, I'm banging, that's a hard bottom. It's, it's rocky, but it's, what is that, five-ish, about five feet? Um, I'm looking here, I actually see a big log caught up on a big ledge rock here. Let's take the, um, let's take the underwater camera here, the, this Nikon shove it down there and take a closer look at that ledge and that log. All right, I'm going to turn this on and hopefully I got enough battery power to keep showing you what I what I see here. We're going under and first thing, you know, we see these big big chunk rock. Now we're coming up on this is ledge rock and as we slide across scoot forward with the motor we're going across the ridge of this ledge rock and we come right up to BAM look at that beautiful log and the log if you look at where it is it's right on the current seam right on the swirly part of where the foam is is kind of mixing in some still foam and then off to the right definitely still foam but immediately on the back side fast current and then you come back down downstream from that it's a pretty uniform gravel and chunk rock mix so I'm just getting the lay of the land of what is what was so special about this spot that two big fish were in it you know that log I'll go ahead and turn this off that log had something to do with a real nice ambush point and, and really what what we're getting here big ledge rock current break still water certainly more depth than anything else around here um, you know you look at what creates the um, the disturbance and this is a big you know just a less than a foot under the surface um, ledge rock these are all micro observations, observations about what is going on right here. 
there's another little eddy above. So two ledges together. I probably should have fished that because it's connected. So the macro view of this area, I'm going to turn this back on and we're going to get a macro view or a larger, wider view of what else is going on in this section of the river. All right, so we just took the micro view or the, the small closed in view uh, of observations about that spot. Let's take a look at the macro view. And the macro is, is when you step away from just there. What else is around here that, I don't know, either, either makes, it, makes it better somehow or I don't know. I, I'm looking upstream. And I know because I went up there earlier, uh, there's just a whole lot of two to three foot deep water that is swift, that is just really moving, you know, as, as you move up towards that island, which is, I don't know, half a mile away, there's, there's nothing up there structure-wise. Uh, same thing if you, if you look downstream. Um, I came up through there this morning and you know, I didn't didn't see a whole lot in the way of um, Certainly no other ledges, right? So that that counts for something to to be a, a dominant structure big ledge rock um, And it's the only one of them in the whole area It has higher value obviously because you know those two big fish were on it you had more depth there than most other places around. And I've been, been fishing the bank here and there's some, uh, you know, there's some leaf litter eddies, the log jam eddies down there that are, you know, foot and a half deep, maybe two feet deep. Uh, I, you know, I did see one spot in there. I, I had my depth finder on and it, it got up to seven and a half feet deep, you know, in one little area right beneath that. But the other thing is that it was, you know, it, it was a spot in the middle of a whole lot of swift current, and I'm being swept down away from it. Um, it was an isolated spot of ledge rock, isolated spot of, of that foam pocket where the water wasn't moving. Uh, it was the only log out there, and it was all together in one spot. So the, the nature of having something that is isolated, it works with grass beds as well. Uh, if if there's lots of grass beds, grass bed, grass bed, grass bed, yeah, they're fishing it, but it isn't as high value a target as if there's only one grass bed, or in this case, only one ledge rock. So, looking at the wider view of what else is going on is important in your your making observations um, to form a pattern. And really, what you do with a pattern, you know pattern is a presentation you know on a specific kind of location we've got that specific kind of location I have the presentation down with that you know finesse jig um, is that you go and you try to replicate it well if it's isolated I, I, I'm not replicating it anywhere close here uh, I'm gonna have to go miles so that's okay though because I can do miles I can do I've done 41.8 miles in a day in a kayak with the torpedo so we're gonna mash it and uh make some time and look for another isolated ledge let's go upstream see if we can't find another one and uh catch another couple big fish on isolated mid-river ledge eddies now i think at the beginning of this i said uh i, I was gonna come back to this one we'll see right next to the really good one maybe it you know has one or two big fish of its own we'll find out so the replication part that I can do with this one that's right next to that one is to target the, the part of the eddy that has the stillest foam because that's where I got bit there and I'm I'm just sitting here in position holding you know at like 18 watts and I'm not making the cast right away I'm, I'm just sort of visually assessing it saying hey am I stopped am I holding you know am I still 
so that visually I can assess is that foam bubble still up there. And I think I've I've dialed in the quietest part of or the, or the least turbulent part of of this this eddy behind this you know this other ledge right next to where I caught those two. Take time. Take time to read water. Take time to look at foam bubbles and say, all right, how fast you move in what direction are you moving? It'll pay off. So here's a little hint on knowing if you've delivered it to the spot right underneath the, the stillest foam. If, if you can feel it tumbling, you ain't in it. Bring it back in and, and recast. Alright, this may be the kind of pattern replication I was looking for. Oh yes, 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 yes. In the eddy, right next to the where I got the 219s. I'm hooked up again and it's another big fish. And it was right underneath the calmest part of that super still water and it's another big fish. Yep. Let him burn some energy here. I'm using the motor, kind of pulling him down away from there in case there's a, uh, you know, I, I can get back in there and catch another one. Good looking fish. Pattern, development, and then replication. Yes. Three good fish. Isolated mid river ledge. That is beautiful. Beautiful Susquehanna smallmouth. Thank you for biting my jig. Yeah. All right. Third solid fish. This one's at 18 and a half from that isolated mid-river ledge eddies two of them two of them right next to each other this one was in the second one we'll get him back in having some fun 37 degree water see you later guy there it goes oh yeah that's a big head I will tell you, everything in winter, winter fishing gets so much easier when you have a day with little to no wind. It allows you to read the water, read where those foam bubbles are just gathering. And uh, I've had very little wind today. And that has been such an amazing blessing to not have wind. Once you read the water, it, you know, it's obviously makes it more comfortable out here. Makes it a, you know, makes a nicer experience. Yes, we still have you know, water temperatures that are in the 30s, but to not have wind, like, <laughs> that's almost a deciding factor. Yeah. Eight, 18 and a quarter.